Hi! In this video tutorial, we are going to be building a current controller for an LED by using a BJT or bipolar junction transistor. So I'm going to get started here by dragging a BJT and an LED onto my circuit. We're going to drag a resistor. I'm going to change the name of that resistor to RE because that's the resistor connected to the emitter of my BJT here. I'm also going to drop a voltage source. I'm going to wire that up. I'm going to make it a 5 volt voltage source because that's pretty common. Uh, drop a ground right here and I'm going to stop it here and talk about the BJT for a second. Now BJTs are nonlinear elements and there's all sorts of equations and physics and chemistry. They're actually super cool components. Um, but they can actually get comp quite complicated to work with and the math that governs them is actually usually pretty hard. Uh, but that's why we have circuit simulators. Um, so there's actually two things that we're going to be worried about here for a BJT. Um, the first of it is the current flowing it down into the collector, which is actually the current we're worried about because that current is the same current as going through this D2, this LED, which is what's going to control my brightness, which is the entire point that we're doing this, right? We want to control the brightness of this LED sort of very precisely and in a uh, elegant of a way as possible. Um, so the current going into the collector is proportional to the current going into the base at this emitter. Um, the other thing is that within a certain range, an operating range of this transistor, the voltage between the base and the emitter, VBE right here, um, is reasonably constant and around 0.6 or 0.7. So as I move this voltage right here up or down that means that the voltage across this re is also going to go up and down right because this is fixed so it's like this minus that 0 0.6 which is going to change the current through this re which because these two are proportional to each other is going to change the current through my led so all that to basically say that by changing the voltage at the base here by changing this v base I can control the current going through my LED, go the, control the current through D2, which is pretty cool. If you believe all that, then you believe that I have to set V2 and RE somehow to make that magically true, to be able to set the probably around 20 milliamps that I want flowing through my LED. So how exactly do we choose that? That is our job as electrical engineers. Um, and that's what we're going to use Circuit Lab for here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something really cool about Circuit Lab, which is a DC sweep. And I'm actually going to do a double DC sweep here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to sweep my voltage V2 dot V. I'm going to do a linear sweep, and I'm going to sweep it between, well, you know what, let's start at zero. Um, and let's go all the way up to five volts, because that's essentially the, like, um, limits of my voltage, my actual circuit voltage here. So whatever I do here, it's going to be somewhere in that range. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep a second parameter. And that one is going to be the resistance of RE. And for this one, I'm going to do a custom because I kind of want to just go hog wild um, and pick a bunch of different ones and see what works better. So I'm going to do 20, 50. Let's throw a crazy one in there. Let's do 5,000. Um, so that's the sweep I'm going to try. And what I want to look at is the current going into my um, Q1 here, which is my BJT. So I want to look at that current, which is the same current as my LED. And I also want to look at the voltage at the base uh, because that's what I'm sweeping. So it's kind of nice to look at it. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to run that DC sweep. Um, as expected, the voltage at the base just linear goes up because that is literally what I'm sweeping and that has nothing to do with RE. So all these lines are just on top of each other. But the interesting lines are here. This is the current flowing down through my LED. That's the current I'm interested in. And notice how with different values of RE, the, as I sweep the voltage, it has very different shapes. Right, so remember I'm going for around 20 milliamps. So right off the bat, RE equals one. Um, as soon as V2 goes up at all, this thing just shoots up. And in fact, at 300 milliamps, I'm probably destroying both my LED and my transistor. Um, so one is definitely not the answer. Uh, and let's look at 5,000. 5,000 is a super flat line down here, the dark green one. And notice how as I move V2 up, um, the current is always super low. It's like 500 microamps. So that's going to be nothing on the LED. I definitely don't want that either. I can't even get to the sort of 20 mi milliamps that I want 
uh, going through my LED. So the answer is somewhere else. It's somewhere in that sweet spot between 20, 50, or 100. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go remove the base just so we can take a better look at it. Um, and I'm going to remove one and I'm going to remove 5,000 from my DC simulation. Run that simulation again. So now we only have two values. And notice how it's essentially the, roughly the same curve, just sort of one is flatter than the other. Um, and they're actually both perfectly reasonable values to pick. Um, you can get to that sort of 20 milliamps here uh, at 1.2 volts using 20, and you can get to that 20 milliamps around 1.8 volts um, of V2 uh, using 50 ohm resistors. Uh, so they're both fine. Uh, given the choice between both of them, though, you probably want to choose the flatter one. And the reason you want that is because at the end of the day, what you want um, is you want to keep this current as constant as possible in the face of other things that might disturb whatever happens to your power supply, right? So the flatter this line is, the closer you, uh, you are to whatever point you manage to set. So if something wiggles, it won't wiggle by that much because the slope of this line is just smaller. So 50 is a better choice here. 100 would probably actually be perfectly fine. Let's set it to 50 because we did science, so we might as well use it. So that's the first part of the circuit. This is kind of that current um, uh, setting, setting the, uh, the current source here, this resistor and this uh, BJT. So now how do I set the voltage over here? How do I set the voltage of the base? Um, I really don't have a one volt magical voltage source. I have to make it. So the obvious thing for me to do here is to drop a resistive divider. Um, that will help me set um, the voltage, right? I have a five volt voltage supply, set a resistor VI between the two to set the V base where I want it to be. So what should those resistances be? Well, again, I can use the DC sweep to figure that out. This time I'm only gonna sweep one thing, but the parameter I'm gonna sweep is R3 dot R. This is the resistance of R3. This I'm gonna start it at zero, and I'm gonna end at 100. So this still circuit lab, the resistance of this resistor, don't bother with what I set it at. Instead, start at zero, simulate it, and then go up by one every time and make that a point on the graph. And in fact, I am gonna wanna um, graph that this time because I wanna see that DC sweep work. Uh, and then I'm gonna run that DC sweep. And here we have it. As expected, V at the base has this curve upwards. That's just the equation of the voltage divider, uh, this voltage divider here that I've set up with R2 and R3. Um, but what I'm really interested in is this current graph up here. Um, remember, I want to set the resistance such that I have about 20 milliamps flowing through my LED this way. Um, so that, to me, that looks like it's about here are 51, 52. Um, let's call it. Let's call it 52. Um, so if I set this to 52 ohms, that's exactly what I need. Um, so now if I was to simulate this, and actually I could just simulate this in DC mode, look at the current going through here, I have uh, about 20 milliamps going through my LED. Huzzah, that's fantastic. Almost. So there's kind of one nasty thing about this circuit as the way I have it set up right now. Uh, and you can see it if I grab a current flowing into this resistor down here. The current going into R2 um, is actually 32 milliamps right now, um, which is actually higher than the current flowing into my um, diode. Uh, and my LED I'm using to actually emit light. This is what I want. So sort of wasting a bunch of current over here, just setting this voltage. And if I can minimize that, I should as a good electrical engineer, because that goes into your power budget. Um, so how do I do that? I know this is just essentially a resistive divider. So I know that if I keep the ratio between these two resistors the same, um, I can actually make the resistors bigger and keep the voltage at V base looking roughly the same. Um, so let's try that in circuit lab by introducing another concept here. I'm going to drop in a parameter, this x equals zero. And now if you're a computer programmer, I can actually drop this wherever I want. You will recognize this is essentially a variable. So I can, by dropping in x equals zero here, I can then use x anywhere I want in my circuit uh, to sort of reference that value. So I'm gonna set r equal to x. Actually, no, let's make R be, can I do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's set R equal to X, and then let's set R2 equal to 
five two x. Does that make sense? That's sort of that same ratio we had before. And now if I was to make this 100, this would be 100 and this would be 52, just kind of exactly what I had before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use circularize DC sweep again and sweep that X in order to see what happens to my current. That'll be really cool. So I'm going to set that as X. Oh, this is actually wrong right now. I can't just do 0.52X, it's 0.52 times X. Up over to simulate mode, and let's see, how high should we go? Let's start at 100, because we already know that kind of works. You know what, let's go lower, just so we don't start from where we guessed. Let's go to 5,000, and I'm gonna go up by 10. I'm gonna run that DC sweep. What do we have here? V base starts going down as I make uh, my resistance is higher. That is to be expected, remember, because some of this current is leaking through here. It's not a perfect resistive divider. Um, and what else happened? Uh, my current, this is my current flowing into the, the diode, also starts going down. Um, but notice how I'm still sort of really good in that range that I wanted for a fairly large uh, part of this uh, sweep here. Remember, I wanted about 18 milliamps, 18, 19. So somewhere around here would really work, um, right? If I had a 100K resistor here, um, I still basically get the same current, but I have much bigger resistors. And the interesting thing will be to be if I also graph the resistance going into my uh, um, resistor here, uh, sorry, the current flowing into my resistor, run that DC sweep, and now we can see both at the same time. Um, notice how before, when our R was really low, we are sort of burning a bunch of current over in the resistors, but as I make that uh, resistances go way, way up, I can kind of keep my same 18-ish milliamps um, and drag the current going into the resistor all the way down to around two milliamps, which is at least substantially lower than the current going into LED. So if you can afford to do that, you definitely should. I would pick the resistors to, to probably be around uh, 1.4K, 1 1.5. Uh, it's probably around where you wanna be. Um, and then this resistor, about half of that. And that is how you do it. This is how we built and simulate and then tried some things using the sweep parameter to make an LED current controller in Circuit Lab. If you have ideas about other tutorials you would like to see us do, please let us know in the comments and a link to this circuit will also be in the comments. Thanks for watching.